Hello students, welcome back. Let us continue our discussion of liquid mixtures and today we are going to talk about numerical problems in liquid mixtures with emphasis on colligative properties. So, the topic today is numerical problems on liquid mixtures and colligative properties. So, here is a data table which shows you the partial vapor pressure of HCl in uh, liquid germanium chloride at 300 Kelvin. And what is the task? The task is to show that this solution indeed obeys Henry's law in the given range of mole fractions. So, how do I uh, establish this? The first thing that comes to my mind is I make a plot where I am plotting along the x axis the mole fraction of HCl. I am plotting along the y axis the partial vapor pressure of HCl and this is the plot that I get. This is indeed a linear plot, but the question is does it mean that the solution obeys Henry's law? So, let us go and review the Henry's law. The Henry's law says that if I have a solution of B in A, then the partial vapor pressure of B is proportional to the mole fraction x B and K B is the Henry's law constant. This equation immediately tells me that if I plot P B as a function of x B, in that case what will happen is I must be having a straight line, but a straight line that passes through the origin. Okay? So, if the data from the data I can show that this is a solution that uh, this is a solution which produces P B values which is linear in x B and passes through the origin. I can definitely say that this solution would obey Henry's law. But here as presented in the plot, the straight line does not pass through the origin. Because this uh, plot if I just uh, extrapolate very close to 0, I find that there is a positive intercept. So, what shall I do to make this straight line as one which passes through the origin? I can choose the very first point as the origin in my problem. In that case, I will be having some x naught equal to 0 0.005 and y naught is equal to 32.0 and I will have to shift the other data points accordingly so that now your shifted data table will look something like this. So, the first set of points I have chosen them to be the origin. The second set of data point you, if you look at the value of the mole fraction of HCl that turns out to be 0 0.012 minus the x uh, the mole fraction value that I have chosen to be the origin. So, minus 0 0.005 which gives me 0 0.007. Similarly, the third point data point originally was 0 0.019 in the shifted value it would be 0 0.019 minus 0 0.005 and that gives you a mole fraction value of 0 0.014. Now, look at the corresponding value of the partial vapor pressure. So, this is the y value of the origin. So, what will be the y value corresponding to the second data point? That would be 76.9 minus 32.0 that gives you 44.9. Similarly, for the third data point, the P value is going to be 121.8 minus 32.0 which is this value. Now, I am going to plot the data in the with the shifted points. So, now you see this is 0 0 and now I have a straight line 
that passes through the origin and I can very definitely say that the data that I have presented over here implies that the given solution obeys Henry's law. Then the problem can be whether I can find out the Henry's law constant k b at 300 Kelvin from these data. I already have the table with uh, uh, shifted data points and I understand that the slope of the straight line that passes through the origin is the Henry's law constant. So, what I will do is I will look at the shifted data point and then I will find out k b as this y value minus this y value divided by this x value minus this x value. Okay. Now, please note that because of the convention that I am using all throughout this course for every quantity that has a unit I am retaining the unit while doing the calculation that gives me as a natural choice for the unit of the uh, quantity being determined as kilo Pascal in this particular case. So, therefore, for the solution of HCl in liquid uh, germanium chloride, I find that the Henry's law constant K b is equal to 6.4 into 10 to the power of 3 kilo Pascal. Now, let us go ahead and try and look at a very simple problem and this problem pertains to the depression of freezing point of a solution when a non-volatile solute has been dissolved in a solvent. Okay. So, here my solvent of choice is benzene and benzene has a normal freezing point which I denote as T f b z. So, f is for freezing and b z for is a shorthand reminder for benzene and this is equal to 5.5 degree centigrade and this is the freezing uh, constant which is 5.12 degree centigrade per mole. With this information you have to find out that if you dissolve this solute A in 15.6 gram of this solute A uh, per kg of benzene, what would be the freezing point of the resultant solution. Okay. So, obviously, this is a colligative property that we are talking about and so, I will first find out the molal concentration of this solute in the given solution. For that, we require the molecular weight of A. I leave it as an exercise for you to find out that the molecular weight of solute A is 156 grams per mole. Then I can say that concentration of the solution of A per kg of benzene that will be given by 15.6 gram divided by 156 gram per mole. So, this is the weight of the solute taken divided by its molecular weight and the result is m equal to 0.1 mole. So, you now have a solution which is a 0.1 molal solution of the solute A in benzene at uh, uh, and which is being uh, frozen. Then I know from colligative property that the depression of freezing point of the solution that would be given by delta T. So, what is delta T? Since I am talking about the depression of freezing point, this is the original freezing point of the pure solvent benzene minus the freezing temperature of the solution that we are talking about. And this delta T is going to be equal to K f into m. So, K f is the constant cryoscopic constant that we uh, that is characteristic of uh, benzene, the solvent benzene here and m is the concentration in the molality scale of the solute. And this m is given to you, k f is given to you, therefore, you can find out delta t. But here, I am not really interested in delta t, rather I am interested in t f. 
So, what I will do is I will write down the freezing point of the solution as T f equal to the original freezing point of benzene minus the value of delta T that is K f into m and then I put in the values. When I put in the values then I find that the new freezing point is going to be 5.01 degree centigrade. So, my uh, <coughs> estimate is when I take a 0.1 molar solution of this solute A, there will be a new freezing point of the solution which is 5.01 degree centigrade. Let us uh, go and have a look at an allied problem where I do not know the identity of the solute. In the lab, somebody is working with three uh, solutions and they know that they have prepared a solution of either A or B or C. Okay. They have prepared a solution A and they know the freezing point of this solution. Then they have made a second solution, but they have forgotten which solute they used to prepare the solution in benzene, but they know uh, the identity of B or C and therefore correspondingly they know the molecular weight of B and C. You can go ahead and check if we have obtained the correct molecular weight. Now, if the person doing the experiment used 1 gram of the solute to dissolve per kg of benzene, then what are the expected molar concentration? The expected molar concentration is when the solute A is dissolved in uh, benzene, it is 1 by 156 mole per kg of uh, benzene. For the solute B, this is going to be 1 by 234 moles per kg of benzene and for the solute C, it is going to be 1 by 284 moles per kg of benzene. Now, is there any experiment that I can do to determine the nature of the solute in my second solution? I would say that I can very easily find out uh, the depression of freezing point of the second solution and compare it with the solution of A. Well, while I do so, I find that that uh, second solution gives me 67 percent of the depression of the freezing point produced by solution A. Okay? If that is so, then what I will do is I will use these results and say that okay, for the second solution delta T i is equal to K f into M i. Therefore, what is delta T i by delta T a? That must be equal to M i by M a. Obviously, here i is either B or C. So, as you see now that by knowing the molality values, m i by m a, you can find out very easily that the delta t produced by b is actually 67 percent of that produced by uh, a. On the other hand, the depression of freezing point produced by the solution of C in benzene is 55 percent of that produced by solution A. As a result, I would say that the second solution that I did not know whether it had B or C as the solute actually was prepared by dissolving 1 gram of this solute B in 1 kg of the uh, solvent benzene. Okay, so, these are the ways in which one can actually go ahead and solve small problems uh, which are of a, lo uh, a lot of practical use. Let us go to the next problem and this basically tells you why everyone is so much interested in the depression of freezing point when 
a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent. Let me read out the problem for you. The radiator of an automobile contains 12 liter of water. This means that this automobile engine to work properly requires these 12 liter of water to be in a liquid form so that it can function. Now I am asking you to estimate the temperature down to which the engine would work if 5 kg of glycerol whose formula is given here is added to the water as antifreeze agent. Now you must realize that there are several places all over the world where in the winters the temperature can go well below the freezing point of water. That is at one atmospheric pressure it can go below 0 degree centigrade. So does it mean that in those places the all the cars would stop? It is not so. In order to make the automobiles run at very low temperatures, you use certain chemicals, you add it to the water and you call them antifreeze agents. So, glycerol is one such antifreeze agent and when added to water, it produces a solution and uh, results in a depression of the freezing point. Let us say that it goes down to some temperature. So, can I estimate what would be the new freezing temperature of the solution where I have added the antifreeze agent to the water? If I want to find that out, I would need these uh, uh, informations as given on the screen and I would say the depression of the uh, uh, freezing point of the ith solution is delta T equal to k f into m. Okay? Now obviously, I would need m that is the molality of the solution uh, in order to be able to estimate delta T. Now what is the molecular weight of glycerol? I leave this as an exercise for you, but uh, it is very easy to see that the molecular weight of glycerol is 62 grams per mole. So, that is basically 0 0.062 kg per mole. Therefore, the concentration of glycerol per kg of water, assuming that water has a density of uh, 10 to the power of minus 3 kg per milliliter, even at those low temperatures, I understand that molar, the molar concentration m that is going to be given by this is the number of moles which is being dissolved in 12 kg of water. So, m turns out to be 6.72 mole and then what happens is I do have all the information that I require. I have been given the value of Kf for water. I know the molar concentration of my solute glycerol and therefore, delta T turns out to be 12.5 degree centigrade. <coughs> what does it mean? It means that upon the addition of 5 kg of glycerol to this 12 liters of water, the new freezing point of the solution has now gone down to minus 12.5 degree centigrade. And this means that even if the automobile is plying in the very cold region, it will continue to do so till the temperature reaches up to about minus 12 degree centigrade. After that, the solution will start freezing and you will have to add some other antifreeze agent which can lower the freezing point even more. Now, moving over, let me now bring in the concept of elevation of boiling point. So, if you have a solution containing a solute which is non-volatile, in that case you will have an elevation of the boiling point. And here 
I am dealing with an aqueous solution of a non-volatile solute which is boiling at 100.17 degree centigrade. So, what is the extent of elevation of the uh, boiling point? That is 0 0.17 degree centigrade. Given this information, you would like to know at what temperature will this solution freeze? Of course, the information that you have are the normal boiling point, normal freezing point for solvent water and also the constants Kb and Kf. So, let us start by looking at the normal boiling point of water which is 100.0 degree centigrade at 1 atmospheric pressure and pressure is uh, remaining constant here and Kb value is 0.512 degree centigrade per mole. Using these two information, I can very easily find out that the elevation of boiling point of the solution that is Kb into m and that immediately gives me m that is the molality of the solution must be delta T by Kb. So, I find that the concentration of the solute per kg of water is given by on the top delta T which is 100.17 minus 100.0 degree centigrade which is 0 0.17 degree centigrade divided by the Kb value and that gives me m equal to 0.332 mole. So, the first set of information was the extent of elevation of boiling point of the solution and that tells you what the concentration of the solute is per kg of water. Now that you know this, then you can find out the depression of the freezing point of the solution. In that case, the delta T is going to be equal to Kf into M. Okay? And so, what is the concentration of the solution? That is M. So, I just put it back. So, this is the value of Kf for water and this is the molality that we are talking about. So, delta T is 0 0.62 degree centigrade and this is the amount of depression that the freezing point will undergo below the freezing point of pure water and therefore, what is the freezing point of the solution? The freezing point of the solution would be minus 0 0.62 degree centigrade. So, this is very simple. All you needed to do is realize that in the statement of the problem, the concentration of the solute is not given. Moving ahead, there is one interesting problem that one comes across all the time. Uh, one talks about colligative properties and this is regarding a solution of benzoic acid in benzene. If you take the solution of benzoic acid in benzene and freeze it, you will find that it freezes at 3.1 degree centigrade. And if you look at its boiling point uh, under normal conditions, that is one atmospheric pressure, it boils at 82.6 degree centigrade. Okay. Now, you are supposed to comment on the structure of the solute at these two temperatures. Now, please try to understand that what we are doing here, we are looking at macroscopic thermodynamic properties and even using this kind of data, it is possible to make insightful comments on the underlying molecular structure of the solution. And this is an example of one such situation. So, let me just use the available data and find out the concentration of the solute per kg of benzene at the boiling point. So, that is going to be m equal to here 82.6 degree centigrade is the boiling point of the solution and the one shown in green is the boiling point of the solvent benzene, which is 80.1 degree centigrade at 1 atmospheric pressure. So, this is the extent of elevation of boiling point when benzoic acid has been dissolved in benzene. And this is divided by the Kb value of benzene, which is 
2.53 degree centigrade per mole. And that tells me that I have 0.99 mole of benzoic acid in benzene when I have a boiling solution of this uh, uh, of benzoic acid in benzene. Now, if I look at the data at the freezing point, what do I have? I have m is equal to this 5.5 is now the freezing point of solvent benzene and 3.1 degree centigrade is the freezing point of the solution of benzoic acid in benzene. And this is divided by the Kf value of benzene as solvent. Now, the same sol uh, solution has been taken and it has been taken once at the boiling point, once at the freezing point. At the freezing point, if I calculate the value of m, I find that it is 0.49 mole. So, basically at the boiling point, the data shows that there are there is one mole of benzoic acid in benzene. But at the freezing point, how is so that half of the solute molecules are missing? It is 0.5 mole, nearly 0.5 mole of the uh, solute in benzene. Of course, you understand that there is only one way to explain the data and that is the solute in the solution near the at the freezing point is not the single benzoic acid, but rather it is a dimer of benzoic acid which is uh, containing 2 units of benzoic acid hydrogen bonded to each other. So, effectively how many solute molecules are present? Whatever was present at the boiling point about half of it and that is exactly what is reflected in these data. So, to conclude I would say that I have shown today how you can make very simple measurements of freezing point, boiling point, shift in these boiling and freezing points and find out important information about the underlying solution. And colligative properties are extremely useful as far as practical applications of these concepts are concerned. Thank you.